Come get hey. it. Come on, get it. <laughs> I don't want to be. You have it. You have it. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And then again from Revelation 21. One of the seven angels came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Please stand. Justice family, the Delt family, all the families represented. I want to thank you guys for being here today. Um, weddings have a certain aura about them, don't they? Uh, I was sitting here thinking about why is that? Why does wedding? Why do weddings have this this mystique that makes us all smile? If you have a frown on your face right now, you need to figure something out because this is beautiful, right? It's beautiful. Maybe it's because of the bride always captivates us. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's because the weather, that certainly doesn't hurt things. But I think there's um, a little bit more that makes a wedding mysterious and have an aura to it. I think it's because it's, it's spiritual. And it might have seemed really odd to read a passage from Revelation, um, the book of the Bible that talks about the end of the world at a wedding. Um, but actually it was Luke and Anna's idea. And Luke and Anna wanted to make sure that everybody here understood that this isn't just the joining of two lives, but this is a symbol, and a symbol that represents something a lot greater. This isn't just this ritual or ceremony that we're having today. This is a, 
this is a worship service because a, the wedding symbol is, is something that represents something mo- so much more. And that is that ultimately one day, ultimately one day, Jesus is going to come back for his bride, the church, those that belong to him, who have professed him as their Lord and Savior. And until then, he's getting the bride ready. And before we give away the bride, I, I want to help us understand that all of these rituals and traditions that we do, there's actually meaning behind them that are powerful. And that was one of the things that Luke and Anna expressed. They wanted to make sure everybody here understood that we're just not going through the motions here, but there's something powerful behind each one of these, these symbols. On a, a day like today, even in this neighborhood, we can't help but um, even mention the tragedy that took place down the street um, with the shootings that happened at Noblesville West Middle School. I know it may seem odd, it may seem odd to mention that at a wedding, but the point of a wedding is to point to the person who's going to come back and make all things right. And that's why we have smiles on our faces at weddings. Because no matter what we go through in life, there's going to come a day where Jesus comes back for his bride and sets all things that are wrong right. That's what today represents. It's so much more than just this joining of two lives, although that is an incredible thing to celebrate, and we're so excited for that. It is a powerful symbol of our future, of what we have to look forward to, and the future of these two as they continue to share that message. So one of those symbols is the giving away of the bride. It's really cool that God the Father, at one point in history, gave the groom, Jesus, permission to pursue his bride. And essentially, he gave away the bride to the groom. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his son to the world so that the world would be saved. Not to condemn the world, but to save the world. And so, with that, I, I want to ask you, in the presence of all these witnesses, who is giving Anna away today to be forever united with Luke? I want to spend a couple minutes before we exchange vows and you guys make this commitment together um, to tell you that I'm very proud of you. It's been an honor to spend time with you over the past several months, uh, more focused time than what we had before, and talk about marriage and talk about life and talk about challenges and talk about your future, and you have a very bright one. It's exciting to see what God's doing in your lives. It's exciting to see the village that it has taken to raise you guys. You must be high maintenance. It's taken a lot of people to raise you and come around you. But, um, but these are the folks, look around. Look around, these are the folks that they love you. They would um, give up all their Memorial Day weekend activities to come and be a part of this. This is fantastic. And I wanna, um, I wanna, I wanna walk through a passage that I know is, is pretty dear to you guys. Um, it's a great, book of the Bible, Song of Solomon. It is uh, definitely talking about the representation of Jesus and his bride. Um, And I know why you guys like it so much, because it doesn't just talk about the wedding ceremony, it talks about the wedding night a lot too. (laughs) If you don't believe me, go read your Bible, okay? But there's a really cool passage in Song of Solomon, chapter 2, starting in verse 8. And I, as I was reading through this, I thought of four words that I really want to charge the two of you with. Four things that we've talked about a lot over the past couple months, but I want to, in, in the presence of, of, of these witnesses and your family and your friends, I want them to be a part of keeping you accountable to this. And so um, the first word is pursue. This is what it says in Song of Solomon, chapter two. The voice of my beloved, behold, he comes, leaping over the mountains, bounding over hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. He probably does CrossFit. <clears throat> Luke, I read this and I thought of you, bro. I really did. I was like, this is Luke, like jumping over boxes and doing snatches. And behold, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, looking through 
the lattice. This is the picture of a groom that is pursuing his bride. And the bride is taking notice of this. My first charge to both of you guys is to continue to pursue. One of the things I love about you, Luke, is when you put your mind to something and you set your eyes on something, you accomplish it. You do it. I was just talking with your dad over there, and he said that you've always been like that. And I, so I said that you and I kind of remind, I, I rem, you remind me of me and in the sense that you're very highly driven and uh, achievement oriented. And he said, yeah, his head's in the clouds most of the time. I said, yeah, that's me too. So I totally get him. But I think that's a good thing. It's a good thing that you are driven, you're wired to conquer, you're wired to accomplish. I want to challenge you though, that this relationship is not something that you conquer. We've talked about this relationship is something that you cultivate and you continue to pursue and have that heart the challenger heart of pursuit throughout the entire relationship. You will, as you pursue your bride, you will discover more and more about her, more mysteries about her that will, that will, that will captivate you as you pursue. She will, never, um, she will never get boring. There's a lot to her, but you have to initiate that in pursuing her. And I want to challenge you to continue to pursue this relationship as well. It's not the the man's job solely to pursue, but it's, it's your job as well to, to pursue in this relationship and to continue to pursue his heart, continue to support him and help him, continue to pursue after the things that God's called you to do as he supports and he helps you through that. And as you guys pursue after Jesus together, this relationship is going to flourish. Without that component, though, this relationship will be stifled. It will have lack. It will have a void. But as long as you're continuing to pursue after Jesus together, you're going to see some powerful things come out of your relationship. And you're going to accomplish m- much for the kingdom. The second word that I thought of is abandon. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. For behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on earth, the time of singing has come. It kind of seems like he's describing our setting right now. And the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. I don't know what a turtle dove sounds like. <laughs> but I'm sure that it sounds awesome. The fig tree ripens its figs and the vines are in blossom. They give forth its fragrance. This is, um, this is a groom calling his bride to come away with him, to abandon things. Scripture says that in Genesis, when God created marriage, he called husband and wife to leave their father and mother and come together as one. I want to challenge you to do this. Leave the things of the past behind. All of the things. This is a new start. It's a new day. Everything that you want to hold on to from your past because it's something that you're comfortable with and it's something you have done all the time. It's your routine and your rhythm. All the things that you're ashamed of of your past, all the things that may cripple your relationship or get in between you or have a wedge from your past, leave those things behind. This right here marks a new day. It's the powerful symbol of Jesus' pursuit of us is that he has given us the opportunity to have a new and fresh start. He has said all of our sin, everything that we've done, all of our mistakes is washed away from us as far as the east is from the west. And today you're stepping into a symbol of that, that today is a brand new start. Leave the things behind and look forward to what God has for you in the future. And it will require that you leave some things that you're accustomed to behind. Even small things, the way you're used to vacationing or the way you used to spend your time or the way you used to spend your weekends. And I love the conversations we've been having to help you guys merge your life together, to leave father and mother and to cleave to each other and weave your lives together. This is my challenge. Abandon those things and run toward what God has called you to. The the third word is expose. It says, Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away, O my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the crannies of the cliff. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. This is the challenge to expose everything about yourself to each other to be 100% honest and 100% vulnerable. Even the dark places that you would never want anybody else to see, as you expose it to each other, you're going to find that there's safety in that. And I would say that with this caveat, make sure there's safety in that. Make sure that grace and forgiveness is the thing that envelops this relationship. Make sure that when you do expose to each other the dark places of your heart because they're there, that you approach that, the other person approaches that the same way that Jesus has approached that with us in giving grace. Scripture talks about God's face being exposed to us and that's the face of Jesus. That's God's face. And, And his face being exposed to us gives us the ability and confidence to expose everything about us to him and to each other. 
And that's what's going to put a power in this relationship like no other. The great marriages of this world are those that are completely open and honest with each other, that are one. So the last word is fight. And it's not what you think it is. You will fight. You're going to fight with each other. It's okay. I've seen you fight together. It's fine. It's really, it's fun to watch them fight. When you do premarital counseling, that's kind of the, you try to take a, you know, a, a, and just throw it in there in the middle of it. Just let them fight. That's the goal. But I love watching you fight. That's not, I'm not talking about fighting with each other. You're going to fight with each other. I'm talking about fighting for each other. And this is the, the last verse. It says, catch the foxes for us, the little foxes that spoil the vineyards. Notice he says it's the small things that spoil the blessing that you're wanting. Because the vineyards are in blossom. There's a lot of blessing there, but there's little, little foxes that are going to spoil those vines. And as you let the little things kind of get in between the two of you, th- those over time will spoil the vine. What you have to be is vigilant about fighting against those foxes. So if you n- remember nothing else in here today, remember to fight the foxes, okay? Fight them, because those little things are going to spoil the blessing that God wants to put inside of this relationship. Pursue after that. Fight for each other. Fight with each other against the real enemy. You two are not enemies. You're not. Although six months from now, it may feel like it. It's okay. If you can remind yourself that there is an enemy that's trying to steal, kill, and destroy the blessing God has for your marriage, and you can turn and pivot that that perspective and see we are fighting for each other against the real enemy, you're going to be right exactly in the center of God's blessing. The last thing that this says, and this kind of describes it, it says, my beloved is mine, and I am his. He grazes among the lilies. Until the day breathes and the shadows flee, turn my beloved, be like a gazelle or a young stag on cleft mountains. This is the picture of two people becoming one. You are hers, she is yours, you are one, and you're in perfect intimacy together. And that's what we're here to do, to bring these two lives to one. And so... I'm going to let Luke lead out with, his, with the vows and have you guys turn and face each other. Luke and Anna prepared their own vows, and so they're going to read them to each other. Not long ago, we spoke for the first time. During that conversation, I realized you possessed a Christ-likeness I wanted more of. Even though I was actively avoiding dating so I could focus on my walk with God, I soon realized that you were a woman I dearly wanted to pursue and grow alongside. You're breathtaking. Today, I'm even more captivated by who you are. You're my best friend. You demonstrate so many beautiful attributes of Christ through your purpose-driven, patient, graceful, and compassionate life. You are fun, thoughtful, intentional, respectful, and lovely. You encourage me and stir my affections for Jesus like no one has before. You have been the most exciting adventure of my life because we met on the same path that leads to life. I know God has brought us here today for the purpose of bringing others along with us. I'm ready to walk with you every day for the rest of our lives as we continue this journey of divine romance on the way to the wedding where we were always made for in heaven. Mm -hmm. I, Luke, take you, Anna, to be my wedded wife. With deepest joy, I receive you into my life that together we may be one. As is Christ to his body, the church, so I will be to you a loving and faithful husband. Always will I perform my headship over you, even as Christ does over me. Knowing that his lordship is one of the promise I will live first, under, one of the holiest desires for my life. I promise you my deepest love, my fullest devotion, my most tender care. I promise I will live first unto God rather than others or even you. I promise that I will lead our lives into a life of faith and hope in Christ Jesus, ever honoring God's guidance by his spirit through the word. And so throughout life, no matter what may lie ahead of us, I pledge to you my life as a loving and faithful husband. Mm. We can do those and these afterwards. Thank you. Luke, from the moment we became friends, I, thought, I saw that you were a man of great depth and strength. It seemed that whenever we were around each other, I discovered more of your joy in Christ, kindness towards others, and ridiculous humor and it did not take long to realize that I was very drawn to you. Later, as we progressed through dating, I was reminded daily of God's love for his children and his passion for goodness. Since the beginning, you have taught me to hold fast to that goodness and to rejoice in the Lord always. I cannot thank you enough for the countless words of encouragement you have given to me. 
Now we have reached the end of engagement, and as we stand here on our wedding day in front of the Lord and those closest to us, I want to declare these promises to you. Above all else, I will keep Christ as my top priority and will work with you to establish our foundation on love himself. He is our strength and peace, the one on whom we must build our life. I promise you that I will treasure your heart like no other, valuing it as my own. I will rejoice in all things with you. I will strive to hold both of us to the standard that God has set for us and will follow wherever you lead. I will laugh with you often and always seek to understand you. I will never stop encouraging your childlike wonder or laughing at your dad jokes. <laughs> I love the man that you are and am eager to see you, who you will become. I, Anna, take you, Luke, to be my wedded husband. With deepest joy, I come into my new life with you. As you have pledged to me your life and love, so I too happily give you my life, and in confidence submit myself to your headship as to the Lord. As is the church in her relationship to Christ, so I will be to you. Luke, I will live first unto our God and then unto you, loving you, obeying you, caring for you, and ever seeking to please you. God has prepared me for you, and so I will ever strengthen, help, comfort, and encourage you. Therefore, throughout life, no matter what may be ahead of us, I pledge to you my life as an obedient and faithful wife. <laughs> Luke and Anna have chosen to make um, a symbol of their commitment in the exchanging of rings. So, I want to explain a couple things about these rings. There's a few few things about a ring that represents the commitment. One is, if you notice a ring, it's a circle. And so if you follow the path of the ring over and over, round and round, it's, um, it doesn't end. And so it's a symbol of as life turns over, no matter how many times it turns over, your commitment is never ending. It's an eternal commitment to each other. Um, it's also a representation where it's an outward symbol of an inward commitment. This is interesting because just like Christ in the church, he gave outward symbols of inward commitments like baptism and the Lord's Supper. And so he said, I want to also put in to the, to the construct of marriage an outward symbol that represents something inwardly, an inward commitment. And finally, it represents the cost, the sacrifice. She's going to cost a little bit if you haven't already noticed. What? <laughs> but it's going to cost both of you guys time, talent, your treasure. It's going to cost you your energy, it's going to cost a lot of sweat, a lot of tears, a lot of blood, in <laughs> especially for you. <laughs> Sorry, childbirth. <laughs> there is a cost that's associated with this. I just saw your smile right there, and I knew you were going there. <laughs> There's a cost that's associated with rings. And so, Luke, as you put the ring on Anna... I'm going to have you repeat this after me. This ring is a token and symbol. This ring is a token and symbol. Of my eternal love. Of my eternal love. And commitment to you. And commitment to you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to have you put this on loop. Repeat after me. This ring is a token and symbol. This ring is a token and symbol. Of my eternal love. Of my eternal love. And commitment to you. And commitment to you. They've also chosen to light a unity candle, which, um, thanks to Mother Nature, is not working too well for us. But the unity candle represents a flame that, when put together, cannot be separated again. So I'm going to let you guys do this. Yeah. 
Jesus, I thank you so much for this couple. I thank you so much for their hearts for you. It's, it's rare to find two people with um, so much of a commitment to follow after you. And Lord, I know that that, that Lord, is going to be the thing that, that takes them on a wonderful journey together. And Lord, I just ask that you would pour out your favor on this couple, pour out your blessing. Pray that you would give them strength, that you would give them fervor, give them perseverance when times are tough. Lord, give them so many times of joy and happiness, that even in the heartache that may come their way, Lord, I pray that you would use that heartache to bond them even closer together. And that out of any kind of pain that they may experience, Lord, that there would be um, that there would be a strong purpose that comes out of it. Lord, that you would use this couple to impact so many people around them, that everybody they come in contact with, they would look at this couple and they would see you on their faces. Mm -hmm. They would see your love and your light and that they would be, that they would be pointed to you because of their lives. God, we just thank you so much for them. Thank you for this symbol. We thank you for giving us marriage. We just thank you ahead of time for the wonderful journey that they're going to be on. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Now's the time, right? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Don't do it yet. Come on. <laughs> Luke, Anna, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Now you may kiss your bride, Luke. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to, to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Luke and Anna Justice. Welcome to the Bridesmaid 
Victoria Garcia, escorted by groomsman Stuart Jenkins. Let's give an extra special welcome to your maid of honor, Abby Chittenden, escorted by the best man, Seth Justice. Thank you very much. It is an honor and a privilege to look out at all of you. Just as her dad, it's great to see all of you here. So thank you for coming. I know a lot of you have come a long way, whether physical distance, mental distance, but you're all here. So thank you on behalf of the bride, the bride, and the guru. So thank you. And I'd like to have just a couple moments to tell two Anna stories and then give Luke and Anna a blessing. By the way, you can sit if you want. You don't have to, I'm not gonna talk that long. But anyway, Anna, do you remember when you were in kindergarten? Yeah, <laughs> kindergarten. Sometimes I would surprise you at lunch, and I remember the first time that I went to surprise Anna at lunch, she was in kindergarten, and she said, I'm so happy I could cry. She did, she said that, and I thought, my, that little girl has a tender heart. So Anna, Keep your tender heart. Be in touch with your emotions. Laugh, cry, be emotionally healthy, and enjoy every day God gives you. The second story I'd like to tell about Anna is actually a story itself. Do you remember the stories we'd tell? There would be, I know just not you, but I see Ellen and Jesse back there too, but we would, and we would make up stories, whether it would be an adaptation of an existing story, like instead of Goldilocks, it would be Abby and Anna and the Three Bears, or Grumpy, one of the seven drawers, we had this whole character and we would tell a bunch of stories like that. But I remember one time in particular, she caught me off guard. She said, Dad, can I jump in? And I thought, wow, this little girl has imagination. But more than that, she wanted to be a part of something bigger than her, part of a story. So Anna, today, you and Luke are starting a new chapter of your story. You're writing it, you're in it, so write well. So let the words of your mouth, the meditations of your heart, the actions that you take be to the glory of God, the building up of one another, and just the edification of the marriage that you have. And so lastly, I'd like to offer a blessing. Some of you, well, it's familiar to a lot of us, but it's from the book of Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance to you and give you peace. And that last part about lift your countenance to you, the picture according to Matthew Henry, a Bible commentator written several hundred years ago, is the picture of a father smiling upon his child. So Anna, my daughter, and Luke, my son. Nuts. <laughs> I love you, I'm proud of you, I'm smiling at you, but more than that, know that your heavenly father loves you and is smiling at you. And as you write the story together, know that all of us are here to love you, to support you, and be a part of it. So write well. I am waiting for Brad. This is kind of awkward. But at this time, we'd like to invite the father of the groom, Brad Justice, to come up and offer the blessing. God is good, amen? Amen. amen. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we are in awe of everything that you bless us with each and every day. Your unconditional love for us knows no bounds and is the perfect example of what a marriage should look like. Father, I thank you for my son Luke and my, for my new wonderful daughter Anna, and I pray that you will bless their marriage. 
I pray that you are always the head of their table in their hearts and in their minds and that their love for each other will grow even stronger over time and that they will constantly seek to know your plan for them. Father, I'm asking for a blessing on all the family and friends that have poured their lives into Luke and Anna over the years and that they continue to lift them up with their faith and their friendship. I ask that you bless this food that has been prepared for their first meal in their new union for the nourishment of our bodies. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I think one of my favorite stories, though, is when we were in Italy, uh, like five or six years ago, and <laughs> we're walking through Venice, um, and she had forgotten her sunglasses, so she <laughs> decides to go stop at a vendor and buy some new sunglasses, which she promptly put on the top of her head, um, and not even five minutes later, she's on a bridge, and you know, it's water, water streets in Venice, um, and immediately goes, what's down there? <laughs> and they topple into the water. <laughs> so she was still blind all day. But that is the kind of love for life that Anna has always had and will always have. Um, I'm her cousin Abby, for those who don't know. She has been my best friend for a lot of years, at least since Italy, <laughs> and has been in my life for almost 22 years. Um, I can't imagine going through life without you, and I'm so honored to be standing next to you and to get to share this moment and see you step into your new future with your new husband, Luke. Take care of her. I know where you live. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, thanks everyone for being here and celebrating with all of us. Um, I know it means a lot to them and it means a lot to us too. So Anna, Luke, you can kiss now again. <laughs> because I don't know how to end this. <laughs> Cheers. You actually have to toast. <laughs> That's what this is, guys. It's a, it's a toast. It's a toast. All right, next up, you're Mr. Seth Justice. Mr. Seth. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. <clears throat> My name is Seth Justice. Best man, quite the honor, um, especially being surrounded by all the people that we're surrounded by tonight. Um, it, it's definitely more of an honor than a privilege. Uh, known Luke since... Uh, August 12th, 1995. I got you your first present. Terra Union Hospital. I was there. Anyways, um, what? I don't really know where I was going with that, but sorry, I'm a recruiter. I'm pretty good at speeches, but right now, I was, I was kind of banking on Abby throwing up, but she did it. So um, I remember the first time I met Anna. Um, and she asked me a lot of questions. If anybody knows Anna, she'll ask you a variety of questions, always challenge you, just keep you on your toes. You know, sometimes after work, I'd come home and I'd just be like, what's your third favorite animal, Seth? And I'd never really thought about that before. <laughs> but um, I think that's a quality that um, Luke really admires in Anna and that we all really admire in Anna. Uh, because if you know Luke, you know that he really didn't speak for the first five years of his life. Um, I was kind of his interpreter, uh, and I'll take the heat for that. And, and now we both have to answer the questions. 
Um, but I really love that. And I think challenging each other, being there with each other, and you guys definitely have a solid foundation um, through Christ. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, this is a great celebration. It's a great day. Um, there will be trials and tribulations, but I know that you guys have the foundation for it. Um, and I, I couldn't be a prouder older brother um, of seven now. So, <laughs> to Luke and Anna. Sorry for saying vomit. Okay. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday.